Welcome to the Introduction to Phase Equilibria course. This is an independent study course that's intended to review Thermodynamics 1 from a chemical engineering point of view. I'm your instructor, Dr. Christy Patton-Lokes. I earned a bachelor's in chemical engineering from Texas A&M, and then I went on to get a master's in applied mathematics and a PhD in chemical engineering from the University of Tulsa. I have more than 20 years of teaching experience at the university level, but I've only been at S&T since fall of 2014. Now, this particular course, the purpose of this is to bridge the gap from the general thermodynamics course that you have taken at another university and prepare you for the thermodynamics 2 course that we teach to chemical engineers. So, this is going to review the old material from the chemical engineering point of view and add a few topics that probably weren't covered in your other course. So, the objective of the course, four things that you should be able to say, I am good at this by the end of this course. First, you can apply the scientific method to the study of chemical engineering problems. <clears throat> now, Scientific method, we'll review what that is at the end of this video, but this is the basic problem-solving technique that's used in all of our problems. You'll also be able to independently solve and develop material balances, energy balances, and entropy balances for chemical processes. We're going to talk about finding properties of pure substances in one or more phases, using data tables, which you're probably pretty good at, but also using equations of state. And then we'll talk about using computer-based tools, in particular Excel and Aspen Hysis for solving chemical engineering calculations. The specific topics we're going to cover are divided into two portions. The first is the review of the basic mechanical thermodynamics. So this material probably is familiar to you. It's the thermophysical properties and steam tables, the first and second law, consequences of the second law, chemical process applications of the first and second law, production of power from heat, refrigeration, liquefaction, all the cycle stuff, and then equations of state. Now you may or may not have covered the equations of state in your Thermo 1 course. Most of the time they at least give a cursory coverage of that material. The second half of this course is probably going to be new. We're going to talk about phase transitions so that evaporation process or condensation process. We're going to talk about reactions. We're going to then talk about the thermodynamic property network. So you already know that you've got a relationship between H for enthalpy and U for internal energy, and it involves pressure and volume. But how else do all these other variables tie together? And there are some other energy forms that we haven't addressed yet in this course. Then we're going to talk about phase equilibrium. Again, we've already sort of talked about it, but we want to have a good fundamental mathematical grounding of that because phase equilibrium turns out to be really key to a lot of separations processes that we'll be needing to use in chemical engineering. We'll then be talking about different ways of calculating some of these properties. So the first of these is going to be residual properties. An essentially quick definition of a residual property is how different is my substance from an ideal gas? And then we'll look at how the property tables and those diagrams, how they can be constructed. Because if you really understand that, you're going to be able to deal with other chemicals in the future that are maybe new, novel chemicals, okay? Maybe not well studied. Or maybe for a combination of chemicals. And then we'll talk about generalized correlations, which are an incredibly useful simplification for how to do many of our calculations. And then finally, we'll introduce fugacity, which is really the core element for thermodynamics too. Now, how's the course going to actually be run? It's going to be set up so that you can do this work on your own, on your own schedule. Now, when you encounter a challenge, email me and we can set up a 
appointment so that we can have a video chat or maybe we can answer the questions through email. I've set this up so that it's in 14 modules equivalent to one hour a week for a standard semester. If your background in thermodynamics is great, the first half of this is probably going to be very fast. The second half will slow down. <laughs> but if any of these topics are new to you, just slow down and make sure that you really learn it. Uh, we want you to be well grounded in thermodynamics. Now for each of these modules there's going to be a video lecture that covers content. There will be a computer graded quiz and then there's going to be one or two homework problems and then a link to some additional review material. So what I would recommend is go through the content there will be some PowerPoint slides. You can look through those. If it's really review and you just know this stuff, you could skip the video. It's not going to break my heart. Then there's going to be a computer graded quiz. If you find out that the computer graded quiz didn't go so well, go back and look at that video. Okay, Look at it a second time maybe. Then try the homework. If you're still struggling after all of this, then there's some additional review material for most of the topics that's available from other online sources. And so I'll have some links to those so that you can go there and get some additional help. But again, anytime you have a question, just contact me. Now, there's going to be two exams that are going to be over the first half, the first seven modules, and after the second half of the modules. These are going to be done on your own time just make arrangements with me to get it to someone to administer to you. Uh, we can find a testing center or we can just do, you can have a live feed camera and I can monitor you from where I am. We'll work out a way, but anyway, two exams, you can do them from wherever you are. If you happen to be in Rolla, feel free to come by my office and you can take it up in one of the empty rooms at the, on the campus. Course grading, 90% of the points available earns an A, 80% a B, 70% a C. I am not going to give a D grade in this course. Okay, We need you to get a C or better. So if you earn less than 70%, you will receive a grade of F. The way the points will be distributed, 10% for the computer graded quizzes. There's one per module, so that means they're a little less than 1% each. 30% uh, is going to be the homework problems, okay, so I'll just average all of the problems. And then module 7 exam is 30% and the module 14 exam is 30%. Now remember those are going to be cumulative over that half of the course. We will be using some computer tools, okay. You need to have these as some skills for the future anyway. So what you need to have available. Well, you do need to have a computer with internet access. Okay, You probably already have Excel on your computer. If not, don't you know stress over that too much. Um, the other tool we're going to use is Aspen HiSys. I know you don't have that one. So we have a system that you can log in through Cisco AnyConnect and log in with your campus ID and there will be a virtual machine that has access to HiSys. It actually will have access to Excel. So if you don't have Excel available to you and you need it earlier, let me know and I will get that information to you so that you can use the virtual machine for Excel. I find the virtual machine is a little slower to work with than I want to do all the time. But for an occasion, I'm very willing to do that. So I would recommend if you have Excel someplace else, use that use the virtual machine only for the HiSys. The textbook. Okay, officially there's not a real textbook. I want you to, however, get whatever textbook is being used for your Thermodynamics 2 course. So right now, as I'm creating this, the current textbook being used is the Smith Van Nessen Abbott 2005 textbook. Okay. I would recommend that you call the bookstore, go online, and verify what is the textbook for the course that you are going to be taking and purchase that one. The homework problems and so forth will be textbook independent. 
but you should be getting used to the book <coughs> so that you will uh, find it easier when you get to Thermo 2. If you have another textbook at home that you like learned your Thermo 1 from and you would like to know what readings would go along with that, please just contact me, tell me what your textbook is, um, and I will come up with a reading list for you. So, you know, textbooks are important. You need them. They're a good tool. But this course is set up independent of a textbook, but not free of textbooks. So you need to have a book. You need to have data. <clears throat> now, I said that we would talk about the scientific method. Now, you know this. I actually know that you know this. But this is not going to go away. You're going to run into this <clears throat> through all of your chemical engineering courses. <clears throat> and so we're just going to go over this now, and you'll see this put into use week after week. So this would be better probably if it were lined up in a vertical uh, what uh, flow chart. But we've got it this way. <laughs> okay. So first of all, you're going to define the problem. Okay. And that's always what you do. Now, in real life, you define the problem. In school, the problem is stated for you by the instructor. <clears throat> then you may need to go figure out some background information, learn what the problem meant. Okay, The course is going to provide most of that for you in this case, but in general, this is the next step. Then specify requirements. So what is it really asking? A lot of times the question is, is this possible? So in thermodynamics, maybe that means you're looking for the entropy change from the process. And you're looking to see if the delta S was positive or negative or zero. Okay, So that would be a way that you might specify the requirements. Get it to something concrete that you can look for. Then you need to come up with a way to solve the problem. So you brainstorm ideas, evaluate what those thoughts you had were, and then choose a solution technique. Next, you develop and prototype the solution. So if it's just a mathematical system of equations, solve it. Okay. Sometimes it's something where you needed to build an apparatus or run an experiment to try something. Okay. In real life, that might be part of your solution. Then you test the solution and you look at it and say, does this even make any sense? Okay. For instance, one I commonly run into in these courses is you've done a calculation and you found out that the uh, temperature inside the reactor vessel, and you calculated it was 5,000 degrees C. Um, there isn't a reactor vessel that will ever contain that. So if that's correct, we've got some other problems. Okay, <clears throat> But we use this as a moment to figure out whether or not I actually have a reasonable solution. So you have to evaluate your solution. If it meets the requirements, then you're really done. You just need to communicate the results to somebody. So maybe it's writing down the solution and emailing me a copy of the solution. For class, that might be it. For work, it might be that you have to write a memo to your boss. Oftentimes, the solution doesn't meet the requirements. Something just seems wrong or doesn't totally answer the question. So go back to that brainstorming and evaluating solution techniques step and try again until you get to an answer that really does say what you were wanting to know. So at this, we're going to conclude this introduction video. We will see you again in Module 1 as we begin reviewing our Thermodynamics 1.